Let's talk about the superfoods that are the best foods for the kidneys. Now, I'm not talking about preventing a kidney problem. I'm talking about if you already have kidney damage. So let's say you have this chronic kidney disease. What do you eat? That's what I want to talk about. Now, the kidney is composed of these tiny little things called nephrons, okay? Not neurons, nephrons. And a nephron is a, a super sophisticated, complex little filter that doesn't just filter. It regulates a lot of things in your blood. So it does filter waste, but it recycles a lot of electrolytes and hormones and minerals and vitamins and protein. So when you end up damaging these filters, um, you're going to have to really shift what you eat because now you're going to have a buildup of phosphorus, potassium, sodium with deficiencies of other nutrients as well. So you can't just eat the same thing you've been eating. I highly recommend you don't go out to dinner. You actually make your own foods and try to make these foods as whole as possible. I would not consume anything refined. And also you need to understand the number one cause of kidney damage comes from having diabetes, which is a high sugar situation. So you're going to have to cut the sugar right out. And also those things that create more damage than sugar that act like sugar, like the starches. I'm talking about maltodextrin, I'm talking about the modified food starch and the modified corn starch, things that are really ultra refined. So no more eating anything out of a box or a can or any quick junk foods. You're going to have to really think through what you eat because what I'm going to show you will definitely extend your life. There are other things that can destroy the kidney as well. Drugs, medications, alcohol, especially pain medication, smoking, junk food, ultra processed foods. And that's a combination of like the seed oils, the corn oil, the soy oil, the cotton seed oil, the canola. You need to just get rid of those. So let's start with protein. Okay. What type of protein should you consume? Because you don't want to do a, um, a lot of protein. You want to do a moderate to slightly lower amounts of protein. And you really want to think with your protein because most proteins have high amounts of phosphorus. So we don't want to overload the kidney with too much of that. And by the way, when you're doing this, always work with your doctor because they're going to be monitoring your levels of these nutrients to make sure that they're in check. But I want to give you some other things to think with that you're not going to find usually when doing the searches on the internet. So let's start out with the lower phosphorus proteins because that is the problem with a lot of fish. It's high in mercury and mercury also can cause an autoimmune disease with the kidney. And the most mercury exposure is probably from fish, um, but fish also has selenium, or at least certain types of fish, like sardines and salmon, but both of those are a bit higher in phosphorus. I would just consume them not as often as the other ones, but definitely on a regular basis. And I think out of all the fish that are the lowest in phosphorus, it's the cod fish, as well as the sea bass. But I would avoid turkey, liver, like beef liver or any type of liver, because that's going to be high in phosphorus, egg yolks, okay, and nuts. Now, nuts also are loaded with this other thing called phosphates, which also can irritate the kidney and block certain nutrients that the kidneys need, like zinc and other minerals. So it's going to make it more difficult to get the nutrients that you need. So when we're talking about the kidneys, we're talking about consuming foods that have the lowest amount of toxicity. And I'm not just talking about the chemicals in the food, which are the obvious things, and the GMOs and the conventional foods. But I'm also talking about the toxicity of other things in food, like oxalates. So especially if you have kidney damage, can really tear up the kidneys. So you want to avoid things like almonds, spinach, and chocolate. Those are three big ones loaded with oxalates. And oxalates can increase inflammation of the kidneys. And we also have other things in certain foods like tannins. Like I wouldn't consume black tea, but green tea is low in tannins, so that would be fine. There's also um, this thing called lectins, right? Now, I believe that lectins are not a problem unless you have you know, gut damage or liver damage or kidney damage, or especially intestinal damage. But when you have kidney damage, you probably want to eat uh, certain things that are lower in lectins. Now, this relates to vegetables, okay? Now, the other problem with vegetables is that we have the oxalates, and then we also have their level of potassium, maybe magnesium. We don't want it to be super high. So what vegetables would be very safe to consume for someone with kidney disease? Well, number one, asparagus. 
Asparagus will also decrease the load of this waste, like uric acid waste, ammonia. Celery is another one that can actually decrease the uric acid, and that's also low in these other nutrients that I just mentioned. Another one that's safe would be lettuce. I'm not talking about Swiss chard or the beet greens. Those are high in oxalates, okay? So you probably want to avoid those. So we have asparagus, celery, lettuce, avocado, cucumber, garlic, cabbage, cauliflower, and mushrooms, even though a mushroom is not a vegetable. And they also create it like more of an alkaline effect. So if there's a bit more acidity that builds up, these will help neutralize that. The ones that you should probably avoid because they're high in lectins would be the uh, eggplant, the potatoes, the beans, the grains, and like I said before, the nuts. So if you focus on the uh, list of vegetables that are on the okay list, you'll also get a lot of antioxidants. And that's going to prevent a lot of the free radical damage that's going on in the kidneys. Another really good food to consume for advanced kidney problems would be spirulina. It's a type of algae that seems to be very good for advanced stage kidney problems. It has a lot of things. It has vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and chlorophyll. And spirulina can actually decrease the kidney burden of its toxins. So it helps to reduce the toxicity of your urine. At the same time, helping you with anemia, which is one side effect of having kidney problems, as well as help balance the fluid retention that you see with kidney problems as well. And one additional thing I want to mention um, that damages the kidney is CAT scans of the kidney itself. Very unfortunately, I had to have two CAT scans or maybe three of my kidneys uh, for various reasons, but I had to have it done. But the problem is like, but that's a lot of radiation put into your kidneys, which potentially can damage the kidneys themselves. So if you have a choice between a CAT scan or an ultrasound or a CAT scan and an MRI, choose the ultrasound or the MRI, but not the CAT scan unless you absolutely need it. Now, another really good food for the kidney to decrease the, the toxicity uh, is fermented foods, sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, really good for the kidneys. Make sure you get the sauerkraut, the kimchi in the refrigerated section of the grocery store so it's raw. Also, avocados have a really interesting type of fat that's really good for the kidneys and the liver. And also that fat can help extract phytonutrients that are more fat soluble in your salad with the next thing on the list, which is extra virgin olive oil, another really good oil for the kidney. It's anti-inflammatory. It's loaded with phytonutrients, vitamin E, virtually no phosphorus. Now, as far as hard cheeses, uh, they're high in phosphorus, but cottage cheese, make sure it's organic because they add this modified food starch in commercial cottage cheese. So get the one that's organic, and also goat's cheese is another one that you can consume as well. That way you can get your calcium, but it comes from a food. So we want these foods that are good for the kidneys, uh, that provide the right amount of nutrition, but not too much. Uh, I would recommend getting your nutrients from the food and not from supplementation, except for vitamin D, because it's going to be really hard to get your vitamin D. And vitamin D is going to be very important uh, for your kidneys, because also realize that it's the kidneys that helps convert the inactive to the active vitamin D. And the liver does some of that too. But the kidneys are very, very important. So if those kidneys are damaged, you're going to have low vitamin D. Now, another mineral that you have to watch out for is too much sodium. And the problem with even sea salt, it, it has all the minerals, but it's a bit high in sodium. It's like 98% sodium. So there's another type of salt that's really good for uh, people with kidney problems, it's called uh, Baja Gold, which is a type of salt that is like 70% sodium chloride and the rest other minerals. So that would be a, a much better salt for people with kidney problems. Keep it simple. Follow this food list. I know it's boring, but I think it's going to extend your life. Try to make sure those ingredients are the highest quality, like organic, grass-fed, um, nothing out of a box or a can. These are the foods not to prevent a kidney problem. They're foods that if you have a kidney problem, you should focus more on. If you want to know what foods that can actually be more preventative, I would go to drberg.com and download my basic healthy keto plan and intermittent fasting. And you'll find the link down below in the description.